started watching Game of Thrones with a group of my friends after one of them had been adamant for years that we would love it, and she was absolutely right. I fell head over heels for the incredible acting, the amazing set design, and most importantly, the otherworldly costuming. At heart, I'm a costume maker, and I've been getting so much inspiration for projects from the show. First on my list is this amazing blue and gold dress Daenerys Targaryen wears when she first arrives in Karth. The Carthine dress is a beautiful backless gown with a flowy cape and gold metal shoulder pieces. My favorite part though is this killer hammered gold belt, and I knew I really wanted to find a way to make the belt and shoulder pieces out of real metal. I'm very excited to share my process with you, and I hope you enjoy seeing my Daenerys Targaryen cosplay come to life. Alright, so this is belt and shoulder pieces day one. Uh, this is not actually a pattern that I drafted myself, uh, but I will leave the link in the description in case anybody wants to use the same one. Um, I modified these a little bit. So the original one didn't have these parts here, like the big long ones at the top. This I am actually going to use for um, like bunching the fabric through so that it's actually a part of the dress and not just like glued. And this guy here is mostly the same as the actual pattern piece that I'm going to link down below. This is the metal that I am working with. Uh, so this is what I could find at the hardware store. I didn't want to go too far out of my way and so I decided to settle for this. This is aluminum sheet metal. This was great cost me 30 bucks for both of those and it should work out pretty good for what I'm thinking. So my first step here is going to be taping down my pattern pieces and I'm going to use a sharpie to transfer the pattern onto the actual metal so that we can get cutting and sanding. Hello there! So I am going to basically run you through the method that I'm using to create the shoulders and the belt piece right now. As you can see, got my safety gear on. We're using power tools for this. So as you can see here, I have already done the shoulder pieces just to kind of get like expertise on this particular technique so that I can explain to you better kind of what is happening here. Uh, so we are going to be doing the belt now. So obviously, as we figured out earlier, we have our pattern put in Sharpie onto our sheet metal here. And I've just got a plank of scrap wood that I am going to secure this to with some clamps. So once I have this clamped down, I am going to be drilling a hole through each of these individual sections, uh, just so that I can get my Dremel tool in there to make the shape. I mean, it's not the most efficient method ever, but it is way, way, way easier than how I was gonna do this before. If you do not have a Dremel, the way that I was originally going to do this starts off the same. So pattern everything out, drill your holes, and I was going to use a coping saw with metal blades to just kind of like thread it through and saw around it manually. So you could do that if you don't have a Dremel tool, but honestly, these are like 40 to $50. So I would honestly say that your time is worth a lot more than that. So do with that what you will.
So obviously I have a couple holes cut on my belt here, but I just wanted to let you know uh, to finish off this particular method, I am taking a set of metal files and I am just kind of like filing away the rough edges, making it all smooth, um, making sure there aren't any sharp corners or anything that could cut me or the fabric of the dress at all. Um, the glory part of this, of this particular design and of this particular method is that there is no one size that you have to make these, right? So it doesn't have to be exact. It just has to be splotches, right? So as you can see here, went a little bit outside the lines. It curves a little more downwards, right? Some people might call those mistakes. I call them happy accidents, especially where it's concerned with this because the overall shape of each little piece doesn't matter all that much. After I'd done all my holes, I just used some tin cutters to cut away the edges, sanded everything down for the final time, and then covered everything with spray paint. And this is what it ended up looking like. I am so obsessed with how beautiful this is. Honestly, it was worth all the effort. It takes a really long time, but it looks so sharp and elegant. I'm in love with it. Originally, I was going to do the entire dress, like the skirt piece, the train, the front piece, all out of this fabric. But then I was kind of thinking, you know, it doesn't have the kind of flow that I want the train to have. And so I bought a little bit of this like organza, very light flowy kind of fabric um, as well, which I'm going to make the train part out of. It did not come in blue, but I happen to have some old blue dye that I used for a Cure White costume many years ago, uh, and I just never used the rest of it. I'm actually really happy with choosing to do it this way because this is gonna give me that flow that I really want, especially when walking in this costume. I really wanted it to trail behind me, and with this bottom fabric here, I think it's just too thick to give me the effect that I want. Okay, so this looks a little bit bizarre right now, but I just picked up the fabric that I'm going to use for the dress part. So this is actually um, bargain bin fabric that I got for, I think it was some stupid like $4 a yard. So this is two and a half meters. And I think in total it cost me $10. So whatever that ratio is, is how much it cost. It was cheap. Uh, and I'm actually really excited about it because it's a nice soft material and it's like it's not see-through So I think it's gonna drape really well and I don't think I'm going to have to do a whole lot of ironing or Do any interfacing or like lining or anything like that. I've kind of got it marked here a little bit like the length of my body essentially so that I can cut it across and then split this into equal strips. So let's talk dress construction for a second because I'm actually not using a pattern for this. And so I kind of wanted to just get this on paper to explain what the heck is happening here. So let's say if we are standing sideways, I'm not an artist, please bear with me. This is us, right? There's going to be two main pieces of this dress. We're gonna have an overlay and a skirt. So our skirt is kind of going to be separate from the whole rest of the piece, right? 
and it's basically for covering up modesty. You're not going to actually see it except for in the back. This is a backless dress and you're going to see in a second that there is not a back piece to cover your back here. And so when you're making your skirt, you might want to keep in mind how high you want it to sit. The one that I made sits at about the small of my waist, shows off the rest of my back from there. Uh, if you're less comfortable with that, you could bring it up to underneath your bust or something like that. Just really, it's for modesty's sake in the back because the rest of the dress is comprised of the front and the train pieces. So we have our skirt on the bottom here. And then for our top part, you're gonna have a strip of fabric coming down the front here and a strip of fabric coming down the back here as well. And these two are connected with your shoulder piece. So essentially, you're gonna have your front piece, your little front rectangle here, gonna bunch it up. We're gonna put it through our shoulder piece here and then we're gonna do the same thing with our train fabric going the other side. So this is going to be one half of your overlay. So you're gonna have two of these and then you're going to want to sew them up the front. So you're gonna have your train pieces sewn up and your front pieces sewn up as well. So then basically this is kind of like a poncho almost. So you're going to have, again, your front piece going down at the front, train piece going down the back, got your shoulder piece, and then to cinch the front part in and create a waist on this, you're going to put your gold belt. I'm going to show this more in depth when I have all of the pieces completed here, but just so that we're clear on how this is going together, you have your skirt piece, two front panels, and two train panels. The dimensions of these are clearly going to vary based off of how much fabric you have and based off of how big you need your skirt to be. I'm gonna show you how I'm doing that to measure for my own body, but this is kind of just so that you have an idea of how this is gonna to go together. So back when I was doing the whole thing out of the same fabric, I actually had already started on the front panels here uh, with the patterning and everything like that on it. But I'm really excited that I get to do a do-over because I have actually refined the technique a little bit, I think and I get to fix some of the little mistakes that I made with the first one. So just for your own knowledge, I suppose, if you're going to do this, what I thought was difficult about this particular piece was that the splotches are too big and they're also too close together. Uh, so for the first one, I kind of used this part of my hand just to kind of stamp it and then stippled with the brush. But for this new set, I think I'm going to use the side so it's a little bit smaller. Still gonna stipple it, but I'm just going to make sure the splotches are way further apart because I think this is just too analytical and too in your face. So that is what we're gonna try with the two new ones. And I am just using regular craft acrylic paint. Uh, you could use fabric paint if you have it, anything like that, but this fabric is really thick and it's already kind of stiff and so I'm not worried about the quality that the acrylic paint is going to give it. If you are, definitely use a different paint, but I'm not and so I'm just using the regular craft stuff. So this is my current skirt piece that I'm working on at the moment. So this is essentially just a rectangle of fabric. So the length is going to be from your waist down to about your ankles. Of course, this measurement is going to be different for everybody. This part here is the length of the widest part of my hips. So that measurement for me was 37 inches. 
uh, at the widest part of my hip and you need to add some seam allowance as well. So I added four inches of seam allowance. So this is 41 inches in length, uh, mostly because I want to put a 1.5 inch seam allowance on this. And then I kind of wanted to give myself a little bit of wiggle room so that it's not like tight against my hips at all. Uh, so 41 inches was the measurement. I came up with this and I have just pinned where I'm going to baste a channel here for the elastic to go in. So this here is going to get sewn and then the elastic is going to be threaded through. So this elastic is, <laughs> it's actually the only elastic that I have left. I thought I had more, but it does wrap around the small of my waist which is kind of where I want the skirt to sit. This is how I'm going to do the construction of this particular piece of the dress. This is what my final skirt piece ended up looking like. If I were to do it again, I might try to make it more of an A-line shape, but seeing as it's not really going to show, I'm not that bothered by it. Once I had all my dress pieces ready to go, I had to sew them all up to complete it. I pleated the front pieces, fed them through my shoulder piece, and folded it down to sew it on the inside. I did the same thing with the back two train pieces as well. I also pinned the front two pieces together and the train pieces together to stitch them up. I wanted to have a full cape effect on the back, and if I sewed up the front pieces as well, they would be easier to arrange. But if you want to skip this step, it's totally possible. My next step was to put it all together and test fit it. And that is what this is. <laughs> Me being a dork. And this is the Finnish Daenerys Targaryen Karth dress. Uh, I was actually really nervous to share this, I'll be honest, because I've never really shared my projects in depth before. Uh, and if you can believe it, this is actually the first photo shoot I've ever done, even though I've been cosplaying for like seven years. I was super awkward the whole time, as is evidenced in this video clip we managed to capture. I just keep worrying about looking dumb and I just, I don't have a lot of confidence in what I do, unfortunately, but baby steps, right? So, gotta start somewhere. Anyways, I hope that this video was helpful to you if you are also making your own Daenerys cosplay. And even if you're not, I hope this video was at least mildly interesting. I'm hoping to share some more of my projects in depth soon. Uh, and I'm also hoping to make my way through some more Game of Thrones costumes. And so if you're interested in seeing that, there is a subscribe button down below. In any case, thank you so, so much for watching. And I will see you on the flip side.